Okay, I'd like for you to open up your Bible with me today over to the book of Romans in the New Testament. Romans chapter number 15. As I was waiting on the Lord in prayer about today's service, you know, just really waiting on the Lord. Yesterday we had a, a men's Bible fellowship in the morning, and I just ended up staying up at the church uh, really throughout the day and just wanted to spend some time waiting on the Lord and just listening to Him. I think it's really imperative that this is a season we, that we have ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying, not based out of fear or based out of a sense of uh, fearful anticipation, but just that we can help others, that we can be in sync with what the Lord is saying. You know, right now, it's, it's so easy to know what everybody else thinks about what's going on, except what God thinks about what's going on. And so it's really imperative that we hear what the Lord is saying. And so as I'm waiting on the Lord and just got up this morning just listening to the Lord and this phrase or this word really just came into my heart and that's what I'm going to teach on this morning and the word is just simply this one word and the word is hope you know it's really imperative right now that we maintain hope it's really imperative right now that we are vessels of hope that we are distributors of hope that we are people that are hopeful even in times when it seems like situation is very hopeless or things seem to be really bad. There's a scripture found in Romans chapter number 15 and verse number 13. It's one of the prayers that the Apostle Paul prayed for the church at Rome, but it applies to us today. And it says this, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. So he calls the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he calls him the God of hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. So the word hope is used twice there. The God of hope, and then as it relates to the believer, he says that you would abound in hope. So the idea here is, is that we are called to be filled with, with hope and to abound in hope to be overflowing with hope now you say pastor wait a minute that's this is not a real good time to talk about this because see it's this isn't a good season to talk about hope well I want to remind you that Jesus said I'm going to give you a peace but the peace that I give you is not like the world has see the world has peace as long as everything's great, as long as everything's smooth sailing, as long as everything is uh, predictable and there's no uncertainty, well, the world would say, you can have peace right now. Or the world's going to have joy as long as everything's smooth and everything is effortless. Uh, it's a good season to have joy. But Jesus said that my joy is not going to be like the world's joy. He said, I'm going to give you a joy and no man's going to take that joy away from you. Well, I would say it's the same thing with hope, that hope is not just one of those uh, gifts from the Lord or one of those blessings from the Lord that we have. When everything's ideal, when everything's perfect, then we'll have hope. This idea of hope here in the New Testament, this Greek word, it's a picture of anticipation of good. Now you say, well, Pastor, wait a minute. I think you're going in the wrong direction right now because, see, there's not a lot of people in America that are talking about an anticipation of good. Matter of fact, everybody in America is going the opposite direction. There's an anticipation of bad. Well, I realize there's a lot of bad, and I'm not saying this to you as though I'm disconnected from the realities of the problems that exist in this world because I I'm in the world, I'm just not of the world, just like you are in the world, but we're not of the world. But I want to tell you that this word hope, when you look it up in the original language, is the anticipation of something good. And what I want you to do today is I want you to maintain a hope in God. Our hope is in the Lord. Our trust is in the Lord. The Bible says about Abraham that whenever God made a promise to him about a son, the Bible says against hope, he believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. So against all hope, in other words, there was no way in the world this could take place. Against all hope, he believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. It's important that we maintain hope. Now, if we're on the same level of doom and gloom as everybody else is, in other words, if we're on the same level 
as everyone else is, you know, how does that matter? In other words, how, what impact is that going to have? But you see, we have to be people that contrast and we are distinguished and we're different than the world in the area of joy, in the area of peace, and also in this area of hope. Now, hope doesn't mean we're flippant. We're indifferent about people that have died, families that are suffering, people that have lost jobs, people that have uh, been, you know, impacted economically because of this. I'm not talking about some type of inconsiderate hope, but I'm talking about in the midst of all this that we know we have hope. Now, I'm going to give you a little acronym for hope. In other words, you say, well, Pastor, how can I remember this week hope? What are some things I can do as I'm going through this week and we get preoccupied with the other things that I'm dealing with? What are some things that I can uh, reflect upon that will help keep this message in my mind? I'm just going to give you an acronym for H-O-P-E, okay? And I'm going to hear, here's the first one. For H, I want you to think about this. Be reminded, you have a help. You have a helper. You're not in this alone. You're not in this world alone. You'll never be alone. Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. We're not in this situation solo. We have help. We have a helper. That helper is the Holy Spirit. Jesus is our friend that sticks closer than a brother. So this morning, I want to get across to you right now. How can we maintain hope? How can I be hopeful? You know, you think, well, Pastor, see, you just kind of live a secluded life and you don't have challenges. You know, I have challenges. This past week, you know, we had a lady in our church that had been a part of our church for 25 plus years, been very supportive of missions. Her and her husband have been very supportive in our church. She passed away, 84 years of age, Carolyn Richburg. And, you know, you're in a situation where they'll only allow one person to go visit her. And actually, they didn't allow anyone to visit until she had passed away. Then somebody could, right before she passed, somebody was permitted to go see. And just trying to help them. And, and they, never had a, they never had children. So, you know, that was kind of a unique situation. But, you know, here's the good news. There's nothing I'm going to face in my future. There's nothing I'm going to face this week. There's nothing we're going to face together as a body of Christ, as a nation. There's nothing we're going to face alone. God is our helper. He's a great helper. Now, you know, I, I tell you, we, we recently had some air conditioner work done on our home, okay? We had to have the crew come and do some work on the air conditioner. And I tell you, you know, usually you got one person that's the, the head person, then you got a second person, they're the helper. And uh, I tell you, blessed is, the, is the, the person that has a good helper in life. Did you know, here's how it works. God's not going to do everything for you, but if you'll take one step, he'll take another step. He's not going to read the Bible for you, but if you choose to read the Bible, he'll give you some understanding on how the Bible applies to you. God's not going to do your work for you, but you know, if you decide to go to work, he'll be there to help you out. God's not going to raise your kids for you, but if you'll determine to raise your kids for the glory of God, God says, hey, I'm going to help you out in that. What I want you to realize today, one reason we can have hope, one reason we can have an expectation of good things in our future is we know that we have help and our help is from the Lord. The Lord is a very present help, the scripture says, in our time of need. So I want you to think in terms this morning that you got a helper. Maybe you're a senior adult and you're alone, you're at home. Guess what? You got a helper. You say, well, Pastor, as, I, as I'm in this season raising kids, guess what? You're not alone. God will help you. There's no season of your life that you're helpless. Every season of your life, God says, I'm going to be right there and I'm going to help you. Now, it'll cause you to be more hopeful. It'll co- cause you to just have more of a sense of uh, joy in life, knowing, praise God, I've got some help. I remember years ago I was pastoring and, you know, we had small children. And, and I mean, it was a full plate. I mean, I'm trying to take care of stuff here at the church, and I'm, 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 we have children, and, 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 you know, it was just a full plate. And I can remember one time in particular, I had a group of pastors that I was going to have host here at the church, and I was trying to get things set up for that, and I was trying to, you know, manage several different things. And I just said, Lord, I, I, this is what I said. I said, I just need your help. 
And I remember the Lord just made it real clear to me. He said, I'll be your strength. I'll be the strength that you need during this season of your life. You see, there's a scripture in the Old Testament that says, as your days are, so shall your strength be. So whatever day you're in, whatever season you're in, God says, I'm going to be your strength during that season of your life. So how can we maintain hope? How can we be uh, more enthusiastic and more hopeful about life? Is we start out every day realizing, thank God we have a helper. Thank God I'm not alone. God's willing to help me out. And you say, Pastor, well, is God a practical God? He's a very practical God. He's not interested in just theory or some theology that's totally disconnected from your day-to-day -day life. God wants to help you in a very practical way. And if you'll study the life of Jesus, that's exactly what he did, okay? So we're talking about hope this morning. We're talking about being maintaining hope during a time that a lot of people look at our nation or they may look and say, these are very hopeless times. What can we do? How can we maintain hope during this time? Number one, we get up every day knowing, thank God we've got a helper. Thank God we have a president that can call upon the Lord and get help. Thank God we have a vice president. Thank God we have people in Washington, D.C. that can call upon the Lord to get help. Okay, here's number two. H-O-P-E, hope. Number two, O, opportunity. You know what you need to do? If you're going to maintain hope, you got to realize there's opportunities around me right now. You say, oh, no, no, Pastor, you don't, you've got it all wrong. You're totally wrong. There are no opportunities around me. This is an opportunity for us to grow. This is an opportunity for us to mature. We're living at a time that's unlike any other time. And you know what we have an opportunity to do? To write a chapter of our life and say during one of the most challenging years in U.S. history, the year 2020, I can say I had the opportunity to pray for our nation, to stand on the word of God. I was living in that day. I was living in that time, and I didn't waste that season, but I made the most out of that season, and we were all hands on deck. We were praying intently for God's will to be done. You say, well, Pastor, I don't even know how to pray right now. Well, how about praying what Jesus said to pray? Pray that the will of God would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Pray that, Lord, may your will be done. Pray for wisdom and revelation and understanding. So how can we have hope? Number one, we realize, thank God we're not alone. we got a helper today. Number two, got to realize this is an opportunity. You say, what do you mean an opportunity? Do you know there's an opportunity to reach people for the kingdom of God, to share your faith, to share your story of salvation with somebody that's unprecedented. There are people that are open at this moment that previous, they weren't open three months ago. There are opportunities for us to serve. There's opportunities for us to be a light. There are opportunities for us to be a blessing. There's opportunities for us to influence lives. As Sharon said in the announcements, yeah, there's a lot of people that maybe they wouldn't have watched church. Uh, three months ago but today if you say hey you want to log on line watch our church service they may be more apt to do that there's opportunities last night I don't know if you watched ABC they had um, the Ten Commandments were on the movie you know the Charleston Heston version the old school version of the Ten Commandments and uh, they had that on and then you know Sharon and I were watching right when the uh, the plague came through the final plague all of those plagues were judgments for how they had treated the nation of Israel, but it was bringing down their deities. And the final was the death of the firstborn. Israel was God's firstborn, and you've touched God's firstborn, and, and, and there's gonna be, we're going to touch you as a nation. It was judgment. And, and so, you know, that final plague. And you have all these families in their homes, and you've got, you know, uh, they have kind of a reenactment of the blood on the, the doorpost, or we call it a door frame in our day. And here you have these homes huddled in there. Now, I want you to, I told Sharon as we we're watching that, I think, you know, there's a lot of people that maybe have never watched the Ten Commandments before, but they're watching it uh, tonight, and they're saying, you know, th this is kind of a reenactment of what's going on right now. This is kind of a picture of what's going on. Families are in their homes, and people are praying, and people are wanting this to pass over them. In fact, that's their prayer and intent. Let this thing hurry up and pass over. Well, it's an opportunity. 
we have opportunities. See, if we're going to maintain hope, we got to realize, i got a revelation for you. Did you know that Romans 8, 28 is still in the Bible? Did you realize that? All things work together for the good to those that love God and those that are called according to his promise and called according to his purpose. Do we also know that the Bible says he's never seen the righteous forsaken nor their seed out begging for bread? You're not forsaken during this season of your life. You know, we can look at this two different ways. This is an opponent, and it is an opponent, but we can also look at it as an opportunity. Lord, this is my season to shine. This is my season. This storm's not going to last forever, but my faith in God is going to last forever, and I'm going to stand, and I'm going to believe, and I'm going to be part of the remnant. I'm going to be part of the, the group, the team of faith in this nation that's standing and believing for the goodness of God in the land of the living. You say, well, Pastor, do you think this is an opportunity? Yeah, it's an opportunity to reach people. It's an opportunity to use our faith. It's an opportunity for you to grow. You say, oh, Pastor, I'm not growing. I, I, I'm getting cooped up in this house. I'm getting weaker. I'm talking about you growing in your faith. You know, we can't just be entertained by the TV. We got to, when they say it's, it's spreading, we got to say, no, no, no. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood over this nation. Will you please join me to intensify the 8th through the 16th where we're saying, Lord, dear, and Passover, we're pleading the blood of Jesus over this nation. We're declaring it in the name of the Lord. Will you join me? Would you join me with that? Lord, we speak that over our nation, that the blood of Jesus is over our nation. You see, this is an opportunity for us to arise. Did you know God knew you were going to be living in 2020? Did you know God said you're born for such a time as this? So we've got to view it. Hey, I'm not an accident on the scene. God wanted me here. This is an opportunity for me to let my light shine. So how am I going to maintain hope in my life? Instead of looking at everything with a dire pessimism, I've got to look at this and realize, Lord, this is an opportunity. You've got to look at that neighbor. This is an opportunity. This is an even opportunity for me to grow. This is an opportunity for me to snuggle up with 2 Timothy 1.7. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. And I encourage you to be a good citizen. Wash your hands. Do everything you can in the natural. But I also encourage you to take care of the supernatural. Does that make sense? Do everything you know in the natural and do everything you know in the spiritual as well. And, and I encourage you, during this season of time, this is an opportunity. Okay, H-O-P, H-O-P-E, hope. H is for helper. You have a helper during this season of time. We have help from the Lord. O is these are times of opportunities. And then the P is this is a time to pray and to praise. You say, well, Pastor, I've been praying a lot. As a matter of fact, I've been praying and praying and praying. I'm, I'm pretty grumpy right now, but I've been praying a lot. Now, let me tell you how I, something's really important. If all you do is pray and you never praise, you know what you're going to do? You're going to find yourself getting frustrated. Prayer is asking. Praise is receiving. And a lot of times you have people, they're just praying, 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 praying. And you ask them, do you think, you think this is doing any good? Not really, but I'm going to keep doing it. Well, y'all, that's not the kind of prayer Jesus said in Matthew 21. Whatever you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. So Jesus didn't just say prayer works. He said believing prayer works. So what we've got to do is not just pray, but we believe. And you say, well, Pastor, what do you deep in your heart believe is going on in this nation? What do you deep in your heart believe is going on in the world? I deep in my heart believe that Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. You say, well, Pastor, it's, it's dark out there. Well, I believe it is dark, but I'm going I'm to tell you this. It'd be a whole lot darker and a whole lot worse if we didn't have the body of Christ on the earth today. You say, oh, it's, it's bad out there. I tell you, if we weren't in the world, we are the salt of the earth. You say, well, wait a minute, a lot of these people, they're not even saved that are helping behind the scenes, that are serving. Yeah, I realize that, and we thank God for them. But do you understand, it's the prayers of the saints that influence people's lives. And, and, and God will bless, and God will work because of the prayers 
of God's people. So how am I going to maintain hope? It's not only praying, the church, we've got to have praise going on. And you say, well, pastor, I tell you, I'll be honest with you. I know that people are thinking this. The longer I stay cooped up in this house, the grouchier I get. The longer I stay in here, I mean, you know, the longer I stay in here, I just get cantankerous. Well, you know, you say, Pastor, how do you know this? Is this a word of knowledge that you're having right now? It's not a word of knowledge, but I'll tell you what it is. It's just me speaking out of my own experience. In other words, you know, me at home, I think, wow, this is, this is a little different. Me, you know, kind of spending a lot of time is a little different. But I want to tell you this. If we're going to have hope, we're going to have to have a spirit of praise about our lives. You'll never meet a hopeful person that's not a person of praise. And you say, what are you praising God for? We're praising God that he's turning things around in this nation. We're praising God ahead of time that the name of Jesus is above every other name, including the name of sickness and disease. We're praising God that prayer's still working. God's still on the throne. Jesus Christ is still making intercession for the saints. And the Holy Spirit is still empowering believers on the earth today. You see, we've got to keep praise in our heart. If you want to have hope, you're going to have to keep into praise. You're going to have to be a person of praise. Now, you remember what I said about Abraham. The Bible says that Abraham, against hope, he believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. And then it goes on to say this about Abraham. And he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. You know, the simplest way and the quickest way for us to get stronger in our faith walk is make sure we're giving praise to God and glory to God. So if I'm going to be a hopeful person, let's just shrink it down the next seven days. If I'm going to be a more hopeful person in the next seven days, you know, number one, I've got to be a person that says, you know what, today, God's our helper. Number two, I've got to think, look around me and say, there are opportunities for me to be a blessing, uh, for me to be a light. There's an opportunity for me to use my faith today. You know, I think sometimes if we're not careful, we're wanting to outsource what the body of Christ should be doing. Somebody needs to be praying. Yeah, us. Somebody, when's somebody going to do something about this? Okay, we are the somebody that God's counting on. And then the other thing, what do we need to do? We need to be people of prayer and praise. Now, I'm going to give you an example in the Old Testament. In the book of Exodus, chapter number 17, you have the story of whenever Moses fought the Amalekites. And the Bible says that up to that point, most of the battles that Israel had, they were quick victories. This was a battle that stretched out. It wasn't like a, a short victory. It was one that lasted for an extended period of time. And so the Bible says that Moses was up on the mountain, and he was, had his hands lifted up to the Lord. And it's a picture of prayer and praise. He's, he's worshiping the Lord. He's praying. Joshua is down in the valley. And Joshua is fighting this battle. Now, here's what happened. This is a supernatural picture of what happens through intercessory prayer. The Bible says as long as Moses' arms were outstretched to God, the Bible says Israel prevailed. But whenever Moses got weary and his hands came down, the Bible says the Amalekites prevailed. So whenever Moses would lift up his hands, guess what? Israel prevailed. When Moses' hands came down, the Amalekites prevailed. Well, Moses got to the point where he was tired physically, and he needed help. And the Bible says that at that point, there were two people, Aaron and Hur, that held up his hands. And the Bible says when they held his hands up in prayer, in praise to God, the Bible says Israel won the battle. Now, it's a picture today that what is going on in the battles of life is being influenced by something that's coming from another location. In other words, Joshua was fighting a battle in one location, but the, the effect, his effectiveness was being determined by a different location. Let me tell you, there is no distance in prayer. What goes on in Washington, D.C., what goes on in the White House is being influenced by what's going on in your house. And what's going on in God's house? And are we praying for our nation? So I just want you to see that as praise continues up, 
and prayer continues up, the victory is won in that given situation. No matter what you're facing today, if you want the victory, you got to keep the praise. You got to keep praying. You got to keep thanking the Lord. So, Pastor, when God does it, you mark it down. Go ahead and mark it down, Pastor. When God does it, I'm going to praise him. When all this thing turns around, when all this settles down and life resumes in America, you put it down, Pastor. Write it down right there at that church. I'm going to praise God. That's not what we're looking for. Jesus said to Thomas, he said, blessed are those they haven't seen it, but they still believe it, Thomas. And so that's what God wants of us. He wants us to have a faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. We don't see it with our physical eyes, but we see it with the eye of faith, and we know God is working. So hope. How are we going to maintain hope this week? Keep your praise on. Put some praise music on. No, 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 no. I got, Pastor, I got to keep that news going. I, if I don't keep that news on, there's something new may happen. Here's what I can promise you. If something new happens, You'll find out about it eventually, all right? Now, I want to remind you, you can't keep your mind renewed. Whenever the Bible talks about the renewing of the mind, he wasn't talking about news, okay? When he said, you know, be renewed in the spirit of your mind, Ephesians 4, 23, he wasn't talking about keep your mind renewed to the news. He was talking about keep your mind renewed to the Bible. Oh, I know y'all love it right now, right? Y'all love what I'm saying right here. But I just am kind of being humorous here. I'm just emphasizing we've got to keep our mind renewed to Psalm 91. We've got to keep our mind renewed to what does the Bible say about this situation. And that will make all the difference. Okay, so our help is in the Lord. Our opportunities are in front of us. There's praise and worship. Now here's the E, hope, H-O-P-E. Here's the E. E is effort. So, oh, Pastor, you lost me on that one. Well, see, it takes effort. And you say, well, Pastor, I tell you, I, I kind of was hoping God would do all this for me. You know, if you're going to have hope, it's going to require effort. And you say, what do you mean effort, Pastor? There's times that you're going to have to stir up the gift of God that's on the inside of you. You're going to have to stir up the joy of the Lord. It's going to take effort to be a disciple. What do you mean disciple a disciplined follower of Jesus Christ you see if I'm disciplined that means there's times my flesh wants to do one thing but my spirit says no you need to do this if I'm a disciplined follower of Jesus Christ it takes effort there's times I'm gonna have to say wait a minute I need to turn this off and I need to turn this on now right now if we're not careful we can get kind of sloppy spiritually you know what I'm saying kind of sloppy well, are, are, well, I don't have to go to church. I'm not going to church. But even though you're not physically coming to church, how many know you still need to attend to your spiritual life? Well, right now, I tell you, I can, I can sleep till noon if I want to. Well, you know, sleep until noon. You don't need to sleep till noon. You need to get up. You need to have some consistency, some, you know, some structure in your life. What do I mean? If we're going to maintain hope, there's going to take effort. There's going to be times that we say, no, 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 I'm going to be a believer. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to put effort. There's going to be discipline in our life and order in our life. So what do you, what do you mean by that effort? You know, it takes effort to read God's Word and to keep your mind renewed. It takes effort. It's going to take effort for you to not get into fear. It's going to take effort for that. It's going to take effort at times at home to say, wait a minute, let's keep the atmosphere in this home positive instead of negative. It's going to take effort for that. It's going to take effort on, on our side if we're not, you know, going to get into strife with other people, get frustrated by political things that are going on that are beyond our control. They're not really beyond our control because we can influence them through our prayer life. I'm just saying, I added this E for effort because here's what I, I want you to see. Though God is sovereign and God works supernaturally, you still have a will. And you still have influence. And Jesus looked at people and they would come to him and say, well, if you can, you can heal me. And he would respond to them, if I can, 
all things are possible to those that believe. Jesus looked at people and, and he said, wilt thou be made whole? I mean, there's going to be effort. There is a spiritual action that needs to take place. So, you know, I guess what I'm trying to drive home here is this. You know, the, the path of least resistance is when you're in a situation like this just to cave in. The path of least resistance when you're in a situation that we're going in is just kind of go with the flow, go with everybody else. But you know, it's going to take effort to say, you know what, we're going to stand on the word. We're going to believe God's word. We're believing in the name of Jesus that God's turning things around. Now, here's what I want to emphasize in conclusion. You know, a lot of times people think of, well, hope. Pastor, are you just giving people false hope? Are you just trying to get people worked up with hope? Maybe it's, church, here's where we're at right now. The body of Christ is the most influential force in the world today. No, no, no Pastor, you may say, Pastor, you got that all wrong. See, it's, it's the Congress is more influential. No, they're not more influential than the body of Christ. Say, now, Pastor, wait a minute, you got it all wrong. We got, we've got the governor and we got a mayor. They're more influential than anybody. No, they're not. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. He said, you are the light of this world. We are the preservative. We are the influencer. We give illumination to this world. And so what I want to get across to you today is, is if we're going to be hopeful we got to realize that in some level, the world is looking to the body of Christ. The world is looking to us to say, what are you going to do during these dark times? Well, I tell you, we're just going to be as dark and gloomy as everybody else. No, the Bible says darkness is covering the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Bible says the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon you. Now, I'm going to give you this story, then we're going to wrap up. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus gave a parable of a sower. And then at the conclusion of that parable, the Bible says he told the disciples, let's all get in this boat and we're going to go to the other side. He made this statement, we're going to the other side. So the disciples got into the boat in the Sea of Galilee, and the Bible says as they got in the boat, the storm came. And you remember Jesus was asleep during the storm. The boat began to take on water and the disciples eventually woke Jesus up and said, Lord, don't you care? We're about to perish. We're about to drown. We're about to die in this storm. And Jesus woke up, and then the Bible says Jesus spoke to the wind. He spoke to the waves. He rebuked the winds and the waves. And then the Bible says there was a great calm. And then he turned around and he looked at the disciples and he said, O ye of little faith. He was, he was disappointed. In other words, you, you have little faith. What did he have little faith in? He had said, we are going to the other side. We're going to the other side. Now, Jesus never said to him, we're going to go halfway across the Sea of Galilee. There's going to be a big storm. We're all going to die, and that'll be the end of it. He didn't say that. He said, we're going to the other side. You know what? We need to be the body of Christ, that right now in the middle of this storm, we're declaring by faith, we're going to the other side in the name of Jesus Christ. We need to be people in faith that are declaring with hope in our hearts, not because of who we are, but because we have a helper, because we know that God is with us. By faith, we're going to the other side. So now, Pastor, I, can we wait till it blows over before we say stuff like that? Can we th wait until everything kind of calms down? Then let's start talking like that. No, now's the time to talk like that. Remember, opportunity. This is our opportunity. I know some of you say, oh, Pastor, I, I wish I could have been living during World War II. I would have done something. I tell you, I would, have, I would have taken authority over Hitler and that demonic spirit that was working through him. Well, you weren't living during World War II, but you are living today. So, oh, Pastor, I tell you, I wish I was living during the Civil War when all that spirit was causing division in our nation. If I was living then, I would have done something about it. Well, you weren't living then, but you're living now. Now's the time to step up. Now's the time. It's an opportunity for us to use our faith. I want to remind you, Jesus in the greatest storm, he slept, but he said this, we're going to the other side. 
Now, church, we've got to have that same spirit of faith that says in the midst of the dark times in this nation, by faith in the blood of Jesus, not because of who we are and not because we're the greatest nation in the world, none of that. It's because blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and it's because if I can just find ten righteous people, I'll spare the whole land. And so God is wanting to spare our land. Why? Because there's a remnant in this land. And there are people that are calling upon the name of the Lord. And as we call on the name of the Lord, God will hear and he'll spare our land. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I thank you today that we have hope in our hearts. I thank you today, Lord, that we have hope in our hearts right now. And this hope is based on the fact that we have a helper, that we have opportunities, that we have prayer and we have praise. And that, Father God, yes, it will require effort on our part, that, yes, we're going to have to be disciplined and we're going to have to be determined in our spirit. Lord, we give you all the glory today. Church, will you agree with me? I ask you to pray. I know you're there. Will you just pray with me? Will we just say the blood of Jesus is all over this nation right now? symbolically we plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Next Sunday we're going to have communion together. One of the greatest ways for the body of Christ to appropriate the blood of Jesus is through communion. So Lord, we bless this nation in the name of Jesus. And Lord, during the darkest hour, may it be the body of Christ's finest hour. You know, that phrase comes to me right now. Let this be our finest hour, Lord. Let this be a time whenever we're mobilized in prayer and we're intense in prayer. And I know many times we're wondering who's going to pray, who's going to be the one to stand in the gap. Lord, today we say we're the ones to stand in the gap. And Lord, we know at its core the word hope means an expectation of future good. And Lord, for the body of Christ, we declare we do have expectation of a future good. And it may not be in the things that the world looks at as good, but our good is in the goodness of God. And we know there's a good God that we serve. Come on, let's just bless him. Would you do that at home? Say, oh, I feel a little awkward doing this by myself. No, no, I encourage you. We're together in the spirit. Lord, through prayer and praise, we're turning things around. We pray the blood of Jesus over the state of New York. We plead the blood of Jesus over New Orleans right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we put the blood on the curve. We place the blood of Jesus over this curve, Father. No better way to flatten the curve than the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we believe there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of Jesus Christ Lord we thank you today for our president we thank you for our vice president Lord we have to believe that you've called him for such a time as this and Lord you have called us for such a time as this and Lord I just give you all the glory and all the honor in Jesus holy name Every head is bowed, every eye closed. Perhaps you're watching this today and you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You've never been truly born again. You say, I don't even know what that word means. It means you get a brand new start. It means your spiritual life takes on a brand new nature. The life of God comes in you. If you're listening to me today and you've never been born again, you see, here's what's going to happen. The most tragic thing that can ever happen to anybody is they would die and go to hell. But did you know if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's what the Bible says. You say, oh, Pastor, did you say that? No, I'm just telling what the Bible says. The Bible says, he that believeth not shall be damned. Those are the words of Jesus. And he's talking about an eternal separation from God in a place called hell. So if you're listening to me, I tell you the most important decision isn't just you being protected from COVID-19. The most important decision is that you would be protected from hell. 
And you say, Pastor, how, how can I know that I'm saved? I want to be saved. How can I know that I'm saved? Here's how you can know that you can be saved. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, these things are written that you might know that you have eternal life. You can know that you have eternal life. And how do you know that? The Bible goes on to say, he that has the Son, S-O-N, he that has the Son, talking about Jesus, those that have the Son have life. Those that have not the Son of God do not have life. So you're listening to me right now, and you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. This is the best thing that can ever happen to you. You say, well, Pastor, how do I do that? You say yes to Jesus. You just surrender everything you know about yourself to everything you know about him. You say, well, Pastor, I don't know a lot about theology. You don't have to know. You can grow in that later. Right now, you need to say yes to Jesus and say, I believe in you. I believe you died on the cross for my sin. I believe you were raised from the dead and that I want you to be my Savior. Hey, that's the most important decision you'll ever make. Here's how you say You just say, come into my life, Lord Jesus. Just say it. Just like I'm saying it, you say that. Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of every sin. I repent of my sin. The word repent means to turn. You, you say, no, I'm not going to keep going down that sinful path. I, I want to live for Jesus. You say, Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead. I believe there's power in your blood. Cleanse me of every sin. I receive eternal life. Right now, right now, I receive eternal life. I shut my life off to the devil and I say yes to Jesus Christ. You know what you need to do right now? You need to say, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I receive eternal life. Here's what the Bible says. In Revelation 3.20, Jesus speaking to the church of Laodicea, he said this, I'm standing at your door. I'm knocking. In other words, I want to come in. I want to have fellowship with you. And God wants to have fellowship with you. But you're going to have to open up, and that's what you've done. You've opened your life up to the Lord. We'd love for you. There's a number on the screen. You can text us. Let us know if you've made that decision. We want you to connect with us. You say, well, Pastor, the, the number says if I have technical difficulties, text that number. Well, if you had any spiritual difficulties but you got them fixed, will you text that number and let us know? We want to we wanna know who you are, and we want you to know we care about you. We love you. In church, Jesus said, let's go to the other side. Let's not argue with Jesus. Let's do what he said. Let's get through this, and let's get through it not in our own might. Zechariah 4, 6, it won't by, be by your might. It won't be by your power. It won't be because you're the land of the free and the home of the brave. It won't be because you're the red, white, and blue. It's not going to be by our might or our power, but it's going to be because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we're getting through, and that's how we're coming through. I love you. Hallelujah.